Well, um, I am having troubles with establishing boundaries with my mother and kind of the next step in moving forward if there's going to be reconciliation in our relationship. Um, it, you know, things don't happen in a vacuum, and there's been a few years worth of, I feel, um, that she's violated mine. And I'm, I'm a single mother. I have three small boys. Um, how old are you? I am currently, I'm how, how, 31. 31. And how old are your boys? Uh, three, four, and six. Three, four, and six. So you're kind of, what, recently divorced? Is that right? Yes, the divorce is final at the beginning of 2019. So pretty, pretty recent. Okay. So you've been out of the house for away from your mom for what, 10 years or so or more? Right? Yeah. Long, well, three days after I graduated high school, so that was 2008. So I've been gone a while. Don't let them want to let any dust grow under your feet, right? Or is that the way that moss or yeah. something? <laughs> it sounds like yes, you're out yes, of there. No moss here. Okay. Okay, so tell me, tell me what the issue is. Well, she was uh, watching my children while I was going to work, um, and this is recent. This is like last month, and it's it was well understood that any kind of corporal punishment, like I, I resort to spanking as a very very last resort. I I try to use a lot of other consequences before I was you know go to spanking, but the the sure. understanding was and has always been that's the parent's responsibility if there's going to be any um, spanking. And I came, I got off work one day, walked in the door where she had my boys and she said, I just want to let you know that I bare bottom spanked your middle child um, with on his bare bottom. And I know you didn't want me to do that, but I thought you'd be okay with it in this instance. And okay. I, so she violated the standard that you had given her, clearly. Yes, yes, was clearly. Was your son okay? Yeah, and, I mean, was he okay? He was okay, yes. Okay. Yeah, he All was right, fine. So, she she so said, she well, violated. I didn't leave any bruises. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. thank you, Mom. So what what happened yeah, then? Yeah, right. Then I packed all the boys up and left. And I, I, I told her uh, before I left, I said, I just need time. I need to pray about this. I don't, uh, you can't watch them anymore. And the there's a problem because, you know, I left my husband, my ex-husband, because there was domestic abuse um, from him towards oh. me. And so um, this, it triggered a lot of stuff for me. And I just told her I needed some um, space to think through this and not make you know, I didn't want to like explode on her, but I, I, I felt betrayed and disrespected. And, and this isn't the first time, you know, there's been instances with haircuts. I said, please don't cut their hair. And I've come back to them with shaved bald heads several oh, times. Oh, come on. Because she would... Darryl, Helen, yeah. this, this is like, <laughs> this is not in any way even remotely acceptable. I know it's not. I know that it's not. So I, I haven't seen them for a month. I just, I, I you, you said you know, haven't I've seen put them. Her messages to what? for uh, seen, my stepfather and my mother. Oh, okay. So you told her. Um, um, why? Mm -hmm. How did the month happen? What, what kind of communications happened in that month? There wasn't any from me to her. I, I put her messages to uh, spam, at least on Facebook, and then any text messages, um, which she would include, like, my sister in on them. So it would be a group message, and it would show up. Um, and No, wait a minute. Say, say that again. Here's what I'm trying to figure out. You, When the incident happened, you said, I can't talk to you for a while? Is that Was that your communication yes. to her? Yeah, and... and Yes, did I she said, say I'm, I'm not, sorry? I, I can't talk to you. She did say that she was sorry. Okay. But she and said she's you, sorry you, for all the other stuff too. Yeah. So you, you said, I'm, I can't talk to you for a while. And then what happened after that? Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't understand the Facebook thing. Oh, I, I sent her messages to spam. So I wasn't getting messages from her there. And I just, I continued on going to my 12 step group. I continued going to church. I haven't. I've been praying about this. I haven't talked to anybody about it because I, 
I just wanted to hear, you know, from the Lord and take it slowly and not share my business with everybody. My sister lives with my mom and my stepdad. So my sister is kind of, you know, we're really close. So any, you know, if there's any text messages from my mom, it's like a group text between my sister and me and her. So there's kind of like, she's kind of skirting that boundary of not, you know, me not wanting to communicate. So she'll just add my sister in. And what do you do with us? I don't respond. Okay. So what's the question? So my question is, what does it look like now that I've, I found a church that I've liked going to, and she showed up on Sunday where she had told my son, my oldest son, next time Mimi sees you, it'll probably be in heaven. I probably won't see you until we're in heaven. And then she showed up on church on Sunday and all my kids saw her. And I, you know, I was cordial and I just, it felt like forced on me though. Like I've, I've found a church I wanted to go to and a community and, you know, and then like, I'm not given that space. So I don't know how to move forward respectfully with grace and truth. And like, I, it's hard getting a divorce and then it's hard relocating and it's hard being a single mom and having to build your circle. And I don't want to cut people out who, um, when I feel like my circle is so small anyway, but I, I, I just don't know the next step. Oh, Helen, I'm so sorry. This is terrible. I mean, with all you've been through and then you get, you know, she's supposed to be on your side, right? Yeah. Um, so what, it, before, I, before I answer that part of it, what, tell me about the rest of your circle. Who's on your team here, apart from the, this family system? This family system is not adding a lot of value right now. So who, who's on your team? I have several people from the church that I've been going to. I have oh, um, a, a, a number of moms. Um, they're not single moms, okay. most, they're married, uh, stay at home moms for my 12 step group. I have another, I, I church hop. Okay. And so I'm going to four different churches right now. So I have people from all different churches, mostly, um, <laughs> stay at home moms and other women. I really you got a church like, hop. So mom can't find you. Where is she going to be today? You know? <laughs> all right. So, so here, here's what I make sure, want to make sure you have first. I want you to have some, um, some structure to all this. So, you know, so there's some dependable places. It looks like your 12 step group, you know, on Wednesday night, I can be there, you know, on, on this day, I see mm-hmm. the, so I want you to just kind of fill in a structured safety net here and somebody that knows all this and sort of is available to you and walking through it all. So get that in place first. And it sounds like you're doing a good job there. Um, with your mom, um, it sounds like what you have told me is that you cannot trust her with your kids. Mm-hmm. Right. She's already shown that. Right. Right. So, um, and I can't stand the comment that she made to your son about, well, I guess the next time you see me, will be in heaven. Yeah. That's just it's awful. Gross. What did your son yeah. say to that? Well, he felt bad. He looked at me and he said, I'm not going to see like, like he had done something and I'm already trying. So it burned bad. me up. Yeah. That's just, that's just gross. You know, I don't, I, I think the way I would approach this is I would say I would communicate something to her like, um, you know, this has been really hard. Um, because I value you, I love you, and I'd like for us to have a good relationship. Um, I have asked you on several occasions to not do certain things with the kids, and you did it any, anyway. So I can't trust you um, and believe you, you know, mm-hmm. that you're going to follow what I want for the kids. So I won't be able to, um, you won't be able to, to see the kids alone. Okay, let's start there. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know the context you, you do all this or how you say it, but that, that would be one. But, but what I would say is, but where, if you are interested, mom, in having a relationship beginning with me, then I would like for us to sit down and see if we can understand from each other what's going to be needed to make a way forward. 
Because I do want a relationship if possible, but we need to sit down and try to understand each other and know, you know, what's going to, and I'd use that phrase, what's going to be required for us to find a way forward from here. Okay. And my suggestion is when the two of us have talked together, we haven't been able to way, to find ways forward. So what I would be open to is, um, and I would talk to one of the pastors at the church who has a lot of sense and a lot of experience, or I'd get a good counselor and I'd say, I think it's best if we do this with a third party that can help us. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the context that I would go talk to her in probably. Um, I mean, you know her better than me. If you think the two of you can sit mm -hmm. down and she can hear you, but I would just have to tell her that, you know, as far as the kids go, I can't let you be around them. If you're making comments like I'll see you in heaven, that's really, really gross. Mm -hmm. Or if I yeah. tell you to not do certain kinds of things and you, you know, you give them a spanking when I ask you not to, I told you not to do their hair and you came back and they came back bald. I can't. So, but what I want to know, mom, is what do you want and what are you willing? Can you understand how? not being listened to and and my request being you know honored or respected can you understand what that's like for me because mm -hmm. if you can't i can't go forward now i don't know if you can have that conversation with just the two of you i can try and say you know what this isn't working and Maybe we need to go talk to somebody together. Or you could say when you, another approach is you can say, if she says, you know, gets defensive or says no or whatever, say, why don't you go think about this, mom? Here's the things I need for it to be like. And if you real, if you come to the place where you can respect those wishes, then I'll be glad to talk to you again. And until then, I guess we're not going to talk. Okay. Those are some. Thoughts. I can do that. That gives me some direction. That helps. Yeah. So sorry. That's hard. It's, it's all Volume. right. It is hard, but God has been so good, and I know that He's He's working everything for His glory, and I know that He's not left me alone in this, you know, to deal with it on my own. So I I truly appreciate your time and and well, your advice and your counsel. I appreciate it. All right. I guarantee you, he has not left you alone. And mm -hmm. the cool thing, one of the cool things about God is um, that <laughs> there's not much that we go through that he can't say, oh, yeah, no, I went through that. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. He said people <laughs> promise him stuff that they that they violate anyway. You know, he yeah. said people do manipulators and stuff. He said all of that. And so he, so I love that verse. One of my favorite verses is in Hebrews where it says, we don't have a high priest being Jesus who can't yeah. sympathize with what we go through or with our weaknesses. Cause you know, Amen. it's all happening, all happened to him. So he says, Amen. he won't leave you and he won't forsake you. And he'll also bring you a way out and bring you help, which he's done. Mm -hmm. And so She's got to make her own choices. Hopefully you can give her some requirements that she can live up to. And then you guys can have a future. I would like to see that. But if she doesn't, you can't put you and your kids in danger. No, that's right. I agree with you. All right. Let us know what happens. I will. Thank you. And I'll go check on your daughter too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell her, you know, your dad said, do your homework. Actually, you know what? She's made the dean's <laughs> list every semester. The girl's doing good. But Woo! I like to, I like to give awesome. her a little grief. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks for your call and go Tigers. Thank you.